Hello everyone, welcome back to another Toyota 3.4 swap. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Toyota 3.4 here, the one that I recently built. This is the 1990 X-Cab originally, 5-speed uh, 3.0. I sold it this, I bought it this spring, I sold it in the summertime. The kid that bought it blew the engine up because he, um... Went through some water, hydro-locked it. Bought it back three, four, swapped it. And uh, you know, it's been fun. Super easy, super easy, super easy swap, easy to do. The engine's off of a, the donor engine's off of a 96 manual full runner. Pretty fun. So this video is about a 800 mile update. So I done about 800 miles, maybe 830, 840. 800 let's just say 800 miles 800 miles on this truck so far i think this i think i finished the swap about three weeks ago so about 800 miles within three weeks i drive a lot i've been dailing this baby all all the time now let's talk about what um let's just talk about some of the issues that we have so far the num the number one issue that we're having is a rear o2 check engine light coming on p0141 uh, now, keep in mind, I did went ahead and installed two brand new Denso O2 sensor, and we also went ahead and did a Cadillac converter delete. With the Cadillac converter, John, who does my harness, he builds a sub harness that has like some resistors and stuff in there, where you plug that into the harness first before you plug in your uh, your rear O2 sensor, and that's what tricks the ECU thinking that it still has the O2 sensor. No, the Cadillac converter. Even with the new sensors and all that fun stuff, the check engine light is still on. Now, I went ahead and took the sub harness back to John. He built me a new one. And after like 50 miles of driving, it came back on. So we know for sure it's not the sub harness anymore. It's definitely not the O2 sensor. So that means it's either the main harness up to the ECU or something along that line. Or the other thing I could think of that might be an issue is when I built my exhaust system from the downpipe all the way to the muffler or where it connects to the muffler, the downpipe goes down, the engine's over here, downpipe goes down, you drill your first hole to mount your upstream, and then you drill another hole to mount your downstream. Now, in the real world, you have your catalyst converter in between. So the distance between the O2 one and the first O2 and the second O2, the separation between that, I think I only made it about maybe a foot and a half, no more than two feet. I need to go measure it. So the only thing I can think of is that maybe they are too close to each other. I should have separate them farther. I asked John how far he separate his and he says he, he separates about two feet or so. Now keep in mind, this is the fourth swap that I done. The first swap, we, I kept the I kept um, I kept the catalytic converter. The second and the third truck that I did the swap on, we deleted the catalytic converter, and there was no issue with the with the O2 coming on. Now the second and third truck that we did, I didn't mention, I didn't recall what the how far the distance was, but I'm thinking that could be one of the issues with this truck. Maybe I put them too close. Those two uh. <clears throat> those two sensors maybe there's two they're too close but i highly doubt it i don't think that can cause the o2 to trip now now does it affect the truck not really but in my opinion i think that uh check engine light is killing the miles per gallon a little bit i noticed the truck eats a little bit more gas but not a lot guys i mean i am driving it every day it's the middle of winter i do have about 300 to 400 pounds of traction sandbags in the back of my truck so my truck don't fishtail so at the same time i haven't been really tracking my miles per gallon and seeing what i'm what i'm getting i should be tracking it so i think after this video i'm gonna start tracking it i just topped off my gas tank yesterday so i think uh i think maybe i'll go back and top it off and then uh keep an eye on the odometer and then next time when I fill it up, I'll track and see how much miles I'm getting. I should be doing that so I can get a, uh, I can get a base plate of where to start from. <clears throat> so that is our main issue so far. Not a big deal, but it is something that can be resolved and should be resolved because we don't want that here. Now, the other thing that we had was when I did my um, swap here, you guys remember the oil pressure light was coming on every time i gas up and we all found out that that's because my gauge is the old style where it doesn't have the actual oil pressure gauge the needle so in this case 
you don't use the 3.0 oil pressure sending unit you have to use the 3.4 so that's why i went i went ahead and put the 3.4 oil pressure sending unit and um it worked now the now mine is a 90 and my my gauge is just the old school gauge it just has the speedometer the coolant temperature your gas and that's it if you have a oil pressure or anything like that then there's a light that comes on now if you have the sr5 gauge where you have your own little gauge where it says the needle where it has like a needle that shows you the oil pressure if you have that set up then you want to stick with the 3.0 oil pressure sitting unit which is very common we talk about that in our 3.4 swap guide so we got that solved simple easy to do the other issue that i had was my coolant temperature gauge was not coming on now the coolant temperature gauge you know it has a needle cold hot it will come on but the needle would just stay right at the white mark where it first start the cold now i had a feeling it wasn't broken because it was moving because when the engine's off the needle goes way below the white mark but when it comes on it stays right at the white mark now it's supposed to stay about maybe a quarter between those cold and hot now i so i had a feeling that the the gauge might be out because those those uh those temperature gauge and the speedometer they're all separate if you open up the cluster they're all separate and they are known to burn out. Now I went ahead. Now I went ahead and sold some cluster to another Toyota gearhead. And then he also mentioned that he has one like my version that he won't be needing anymore because he bought my new cluster, which is the SR5. So I was able to get his old one. And when I took out my gauge today, I looked through the back of the uh, coolant temperature gauge and everything looked perfect there's little wires behind it like a electrical wire like a light bulb fillet if you look at that and if it's all burnt out that's how you know it's bad but mine wasn't like that and also the coolant temperature gauge that i got from the other toyota gear his wasn't like that so i installed his just for the heck of it and i was still having the same issue and then i found out that maybe or i didn't find out but i had then the next step was like hey maybe the coolant temperature sensor is bad which is located right behind the uh way behind the engine near the firewall between the two cylinder heads you know that was the next step to say hey the sensor could be bad now i found out that if you were to unplug that sensor there's only one wire that goes to it if you were to unplug that and put a wire in there to, let's say you put a wire in there to tap it and then you ground that wire so that's what i did i put a wire in there because the sensor wire is super short and i put a different another wire to touch it and then on the other end, I touched the intake manifold, which is ground. And when I did that, the coolant temperature gauge went all the way to hot. So that tells us that the gauge is working fine. So the next step I did was I let the engine cool down for about two hours. Went ahead and ate some food. Came back out when the engine was cool. So coolant wouldn't splash on me. I went ahead and removed the, uh, the coolant temperature sensor gauge. And then I had some spare ones. I took one of my spare, I br wire brushed it. I put some um, thread sealant on it, installed it. And what do you know, yalla, it turns right on. Um, when I got it started, it took a while for it to come on. But once it got, got up to like 150 degrees, 180 degrees, I was looking on my uh, scanner. Once it got up to 180 degrees, it's right where it should need to be. And I'll put a photo right here. So that's how you fix it. Now, I don't know if the sensor was bad or if it was just dirty because I installed a new one. I guess I should have installed the same one, but I should have cleaned it. But it's all good. So the moral of the story is that when you're doing your install, make sure you take out that coolant temperature sensor. Take it out, wire brush it, put thread sealant on, and install it because... I didn't even think about that, but thankfully it's not too hard to access. It's a bit tricky to get to, uh, but I was able to get it out. It's 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 a 12 mil. Take a 12 mil socket, and you can unscrew it. And my hands were small enough, I was able to get it out. But if you can't get it out, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is just remove the intake manifold, and then you can have more access to it. So we solved that now. So we solved our coolant our coolant temperature gauge. We solved the oil pressure gauge. The only issue we have now is the check engine light. Now I did went ahead and clear it because it's super annoying when the light's on. So every now and then when it comes on, I just go and click my um, my reader and I just clear the code 
But for now, I don't really know what to do. I think I'm just gonna live with it for now. I did went ahead and check out the ECU. All the pins are good, so it's not like, it's not like any pins are loose or anything like that. Now, I was reading online, there is a way to check, you know, if you unplug your O2 sensor, on <coughs> your engine harness, there is a way to check because there's four wires that go to your O2 sensor or that, that's at the plug. I guess you can check for 12 volt and all your stuff like that. So I need to do that and just make sure that the main harness is getting power, etc., etc. But overall, those are the three main issue, and everything else has been going well. We haven't had any oil leaks, engine leaks, or anything like that. Keep in mind, I did went ahead and changed the engine oil around 350 miles when th within 350 miles. So right now, from that oil change to 800 miles now, we're prop approximately uh, 500 miles. Or so 800 mile overall. I think once I get to like. And I think in the next 500 miles, I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil again. And I also haven't flushed the coolant system, so it's always good to flush your coolant system if you guys are doing this engine rebuild. You want to flush it out, so I think it is a good time to go ahead and flush it out. Now, keep in mind, I'm just running basic engine coolant, nothing crazy, none, none of that Toyota red expensive stuff, just regular pre stone, pre mixed green coolant, easy to get, and it's just simple. It works, it's easy to get. And you know, if I'm ever in a small town and I can't find engine coolant, at least they'll have the generic stuff which is green coolant my 1990 Toyota pickup i'm so excited about this beautiful truck man i just love it it's so ugly it, but it's pretty in my ways it might not be pretty to you but it runs great it's reliable quick update you guys remember that one toyota that flew over that i bought the junk rig from these are the fenders from it so i had one ahead and I don't know if I update you guys, but I did went ahead and install those fenders. So the driver fender is a little damaged right here, but not a big deal. Went ahead and installed the fenders. We went ahead and removed the bumper balance. This is the passenger side. You guys can't really see. It's in great shape. A little dang here, but nothing bad. And then I also went ahead and installed the hood with the same color. So this is the hood that would match it. So now it looks really good. It blue. It's the blue teal. And then the door is kind of like, you know, off, off dark greenish anyways. But like I said, it's just so small stuff. It's not a pretty truck, but man, it runs good. And that's the whole point of it, guys. The whole concept of this truck is to keep it reliable, simple, and, you know, just basic. You know, I really want to put some 33, 10.5, just go bigger and such. But at the same time, I'm like, man, do I really want to spend over a thousand dollars just on tires when these tires are 235 they have amazing tread. They're almost brand new. So I'm like, man, let me just run these tires until they're burnt out. And then I'll upgrade in the next couple years. So that's the concept, guys. I think the most expensive thing I've done so far is, like say, the engine swap, which is mandatory. And then I also went ahead and purchased a rear trail gear bumper because I don't have a rear bumper. I don't have a rear bumper. And also, if I was to find a stock bumper, there isn't really any that's good. So I went ahead and invest in a rear bumper, which I think is worth it. So the 3.4 guys, uh, what is there to talk about? Nothing really. I mean, you guys heard the whole story. That's about it, man. I might go ahead and take the fan off so I can go ahead and install the fan trail back on just to make it look more, you know, factory, look more pretty. For people that are wondering, <coughs> I live in Alaska. I am not a big fan of installing fan straw because when you have the fan straw, it's more complicated to, it's just one more thing you have to take off to remove your fan, et cetera, et cetera. Because for example, if I want to remove my fan, I just need to undo the, uh, the four nuts and it pops out. But if I wanted to remove the fan and I have the fan straw on, well, I have to fight the fan straw to get to those nuts. And then I have to remove the fan straw with the fan to come out at once. So that's the reason why I'm never a big fan of the fan straw, even with all my truck. Now, the biggest question people have asked me in the past is, hey, is, are, um, is your engine cool enough? Is it keeping your engine cool enough? Because the fan straw does kind of serve a purpose. You know, it kind of keeps the airflow around this area, inside this area. And all my trucks in the past that I have no fan shroud on, there has never been a heating issue. The engine has always been cool. There, ha It hasn't overheat or nothing like that. So I think, in my opinion, if you remove your fan shroud, as long as all your cooling, sy cooling system is up to date, you know, fresh coolant, 
no leaks, good water pump, good thermostat. As long as all those are good to date, good high quality parts, you shouldn't have any issue unless you're like in Arizona, Texas, or California where you see 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees um, hot summer days. We don't have that in Alaska. So in my opinion, I don't really care about the fan shroud. The only reason why I might want to install it is to make it look more factory. But at the same time, I really don't care about it. It's not a big priority. I also went ahead and installed new spark plug wires. These are the new Denso one. Just for the heck of it, you know, why not? You know, I told you guys that when I did my install, I went ahead and used um, I went ahead and used some new spark plug, which were still good. But other than that, I haven't done much. I mean, like I said, I just figured I'd put that new one in there. And then I also went ahead <coughs> and mount the air box. It's held by one bolt. So I put one of those uh, insert nuts, drill insert nuts, <coughs> and put it through the old battery tray and then hold it in there. So the other thing I might invest in the future is the toy only swap which is uh the toy only swap they have a cold air intake you guys know all about that one i did that on my red swap my 94 red truck this summer last summer <coughs> or last fall and uh that's about 230 maybe 250 dollars ship that's one of the things that i might do because i might want to invest in that just because it's a cleaner look and it's a more simpler look and i plan to keep this vehicle as a street daily truck only. I'm not gonna go mudding. I'm not gonna take it off road where I need like a snorkel system. So I might invest in that next, which is a bit more expensive, you know, 200 bucks for a co air intake, but I think it might be worth it. And then other than that, guys, I haven't really done too much of it. You know, the <coughs> coolant temperature sensor is way behind there between the firewall. Between that, you can, you gotta reach between that and to get it. That's where the ECU goes into, if you guys are wondering what that green box is. So that's pretty much it guys evap system <coughs> evap system has been doing well we don't have any kind of evap codes or check engine light codes for the evap or anything like that and just overall the truck <coughs> has been running fine now keep in mind this is the this is the new hood that i install and i didn't even cut the hood you know most of the time you have to cut the brace so when you remove this um, heating pad here, insulation pad, <coughs> what I usually do in the past with my swap is that you have to cut this hood brace right here. This You see this hood brace? Cut it right there, right there, and sometime right here. But on the original hood, I didn't even have to cut it, and it was clear. You can see here, it's rubbing right here only. This is the part where it's rubbing right here. And usually it rubs at this corner, or in this case, I think it's rubbing right here. But for the most part, I don't have to cut this hood. So it varies. When you do a 3-4 swap, even though it sits a bit higher, every truck varies. So when you do your 3-4 swap, don't cut your hood yet until you test fit it. If you need to cut the hood brace, then go ahead and cut it. Or you can go the other option, like the body lift or the shave intake. So those are the other options. But overall, guys, everything's been going well. This is the 1990 truck. Like I said, maybe I'll give you guys another walk around. Uh, on another day when it's brighter during the daytime and show you guys this truck but so far she's been doing good like i say 850 mile update runs good lots of power um lots of fun we just had that one check engine light for the o2 sensor so for the most part i'll keep you guys updated and i'll see you guys on the next video if you guys want to stay up to date follow the instagram nutty new underscore four by four see you guys next time